हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू कालरिया यूट्यूब चैनल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न साइंस ग्रेड सिक्स एन सी आर टी सिलेबस चैप्टर नंबर सेवन गेटिंग टू नो प्लांट्स यस प्लांट्स अराउंड अस वी कैन सी अ मेनी मेनी प्लांट्स इज इंट इट ओके देर आर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ प्लांट्स सम आर स्मॉल प्लांट सम आर बिग प्लांट्स सम आर सो टॉल सम आर सो वीक एंड सम आर सो स्ट्रॉन्ग ओके सो डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ प्लांट्स कैन बी कैटेगराइज डिफरेंटली ओके वी विल सी नाउ प्लांट्स आर ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप्स येस ब्राउन स्टैम ग्रीन लीफ येलो लीफ डिफरेंट यू हैव सीन नाउ प्लांट्स आर कैटेगराइज इन टू थ्री कैटेगरीज हियर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न दैट हर्ब्स shrubs and trees let us see first herbs now herbs how can you identify that the plants are falling in the category of herbs yes plants with green and tender stems now the plants which are with green and tender tender means which can be easily break okay so plants with green and tender stems can fall in the category of herbs second shrubs shrubs means a kind of plants with branches near the stem okay so shrubs are the plants with branches near the base of the stem their height is little bit bigger than herbs and they have branches near the stems now trees how can you identify the trees trees you know very well yes you have a very good example also people isn't it mango tree banyan tree all these are huge and very thick stem okay so trees are tall plants with thick brown stem okay so mainly we have seen three kinds of uh, plants are uh, divided into herb shrubs and trees herbs yes you can have a very good example rose plant even tulsi they are the herb plants isn't it now shrubs example of shrub plants are lemon jasmine and so on and very easy to identify the trees yes they are huge in size very thick and brown stem so this much i think you are clear with now each we will study in detail okay now we will see other also let us see okay students so now you are thorough that plants fall under three categories herb shrubs and trees even creepers and climbers are plants with weak stems so creepers and climbers you have a example grapes and so on they are falling under the weak stems they neither they are neither herb shrub or trees okay now let us study one by one in detail now stem what is the function of stem as you know that in our body parts there are the various function of eye hand legs and so on isn't it in the same way the different parts of plant have a different functions let us see the first one stem now what is the role of stem in the plant yes stem conducts water and minerals yes they conducts means they transfer through narrow tubes so narrow tubes are already present in the stem and they conduct water and minerals through narrow tubes present in it to leaves after taking where they transfer they transfer it to the leaves and other plant parts so you are clear with the stem what is the function of stem yes to conduct water and minerals okay where you are watering the plant in the 
lower level only isn't it in the land part but the whole leaves are fresh how they got the water they get water through stem isn't it okay now the main parts of a leaf are lamina petiole midrib and veins clear so which are the main parts of leaf yes we will study over here lamina petiole midrib and veins now what are the function of it that we will study later on now leaves show two type of vanishing isn't it in leaf lamina is there but two type of vanishing we are going to learn over here that is the parallel and reticulate so how do you come to know whether it is parallel or reticulate that i will explain you okay clear till here okay students now let us study the structure of a leaf with the help of diagram and some part of a leaf petiole so petiole is a part of a leaf which is connected to the stem of a plant isn't it petiole is a part of a leaf which is connected to the stem of a tree or plant now lamina what is the lamina it is a broad part of a leaf lamina is a broad part of a leaf vein now the small small lines which you can see in the leaf it is considered as a vein and a middle line central line of a leaf is known as a midrib now previously i told you that there are two type of venation parallel venation and reticulate venation so how can you come to know that whether it is parallel venation or reticulate suppose for parallel venation we can say that if parallel veins are in the leaf then it falls under the category of parallel venation while the net like structure of vein in a leaf it is found then it is known as reticulate venation okay so parallel venation have a parallel veins in the leaf why reticulate venation means it has a net like structure the structure of veins is a net like okay now some examples of reticulate venation i can tell you that is a rose tulsi hibiscus and parallel venation means a plants like grains banana grass maize and so on clear now creepers and climbers you are clear clear that creepers are always in the ground only okay why climbers climb with the help of some support it is a kind of a plants which climb up with the help of support without support the climbers plant cannot grow while creepers are always found in the ground now some example of creeper plants are watermelon sweet potato and pumpkin while the examples of climbers are cucumber money plant grape vine yes students you might have seen the money plant mostly it is found in all the home so you are clear with the creepers climbers and parallel venation and reticulate venation parallel means which is having parallel veins in the leaf while reticulate means it has a net like structure in the leaf example also i have given you net like structure means this kind of structure if you see in the leaf it is known as a reticulate venation so students you have learned that what is the function of stem that stem carries the water and minerals to the different parts of the plant okay it is a carrier okay now we have also learned the reticulate venation parallel venation but uh, in short you can remember that parallel venation is always found in the monocot type of plants okay it is found in the monocot type of plants and reticulate venation is always found in the dicot type of plants now let us understand a new terminology transpiration what is transpiration transpiration means water comes out of leaf in the form of vapor yes it releases the water 
through leaves okay such kind of process is known as transpiration in human body also perspiration is there isn't it uh, when there is a more heat the water come out from your skin especially on the nose part in your hands such parts release the water that is a perspiration but in plants the water is releasing in the form of vapor so water droplets are found and that is coming out from the pores and that pores are known as stomata and such process is known as transpiration now photosynthesis you are already aware that photosynthesis it is a process by which plants prepare their food but it requires sunlight and green substance and that is the chlorophyll isn't it in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll it prepares the food specially leaves prepare so that process is known as photosynthesis and leaves are also known as the kitchen of the plant because food is prepared over there and then it is supplied to the different parts of the plant so transpiration is the process of releasing water through the leaves in the form of vapor and photosynthesis it is the process by which plant prepares their food but in the presence of sunlight and green like substance that is a chlorophyll so you have learned about the stem isn't it it carries water and minerals to the different parts of the plant it is having just a, like a, a two way it carries upside also and downward also okay now let us learn about the root 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 what is the function of roots roots help in anchoring the plant to the soil anchoring anchoring means it fix the plant to the soil due to root only plants are not falling it stands erect and stands properly it is placed due to root two type of roots are tap root and fibrous root here we are going to learn two type of roots that is the tap root and fibrous root now root type and leaf venation are related to each other just now i have also told you that parallel venation is mostly found in the monocot plant while dico uh, reticulate venation is found in the dicot plant in the same way root type and leaf venation are also connected to each other now tap roots tap roots are find in reticulate venation and dicot type of plant okay it is always found in the reticulate venation and dicot type of plants while fibrous roots are always found in parallel venation and monocot type of plants so you can easily find out with the help of venation also that which kind of roots it is containing and you can also find with the help of roots that which kind of venation it might be having they are connected to each other now some examples of tap roots are beet carrot and mango so all these plants are having the uh, reticulate venation and the some examples of fibrous roots are tomato wheat rice and others are also there we are seeing over here three only and it is having parallel venation clear so if parallel venation is there it always has a fibrous root and if it is having a reticulate venation then it always have a tap root <coughs> so you learn the function of roots and type of roots <coughs> now how can you identify the tap root tap root is the main root or central root of the plant tap root is either you can say it is a main root of the plant or a central root of the plant <coughs> now lateral root what do you mean by lateral root 
it is the small root that grows on the main root so it falls in the category of tap root only because it is growing on the main root and they are many many small roots which are growing on the main root so it is coming in the tap root only it is a not a different type now fibrous root roots which has branching in all the direction is known as the fibrous root so fibrous root doesn't have any main root but it has a branching in all direction many many tiny roots are present and it has many roots and it comes in the fibrous root so the lateral root it is a small root that grows on the main root while tap root is the central root or you can also tell that it is a main root so now students you are clear with the function of root you have already learned the stem root and now we will learn about the flowers okay students now let us learn about the flower the structure of flower flower they are the colorful parts of the plants you are aware only of the flowers they are the colorful parts of the plants or uh, even in mango trees wheat trees in grass also some minute flowers are there but we are not able to see properly we can we are only easily able to identify the lotus rose marigold and so on but there are flowers mostly present in all the plants they are also absent in some plants but they are mostly present now different parts of flower there are the different parts of flower let us see which are the different parts sepals petals stamen and pistil yes these are the different parts of the flowers petals you know that rose easily you are able to identify the petals of the flower and what are the sepals they are the lower part attached to the flower now what is this stamen and pistil let us see yes so flower is let us classify into two parts male flower plant and female flower plant now in male flower plant we have a two anther and filament okay these are the male part of flower anther and filament are the male part of flower while female part of flower is a pistil only one is a pistil now again in pistil we have three categories stigma style and ovary these are present in the pistil and the small bead like structure present in the ovary is known as ovules so ovules are present in the ovary and they are small bead like structures so you are clear with the stamen and pistil stamen is the main flower part plant and that anther and filament are there while in female part pistil and it also have a stigma style and ovary and again ovary contains the ovules it is a small bead like structure so it helps in the production of the flowers so many parts just like stamen and pistil are not always same or not always present in the flower there might be some flowers in which only sepals and petals are there while some parts of the uh, flower might be having only stamen and pistil so it is not necessary that all these are present in the flower even the number of sepals and petals are different in different flowers it is not necessary that if one flower has a five sepals it always have a five sepals in all the flowers it may vary from 2 3 to 8 to 10 even the number of petals 
some flower have a more number of petals while some flower have a has a less number of petals so it is not necessary that all these parts are present in all the flower and also the same number is present that is also not necessary for the production of the flower this a uh, male part is necessary and female flower part plant is also necessary here male flower part has a stamen which is further divided into anther and filament i hope you are clear with the stamen and pistil it is the male and female part of the flowers while stamen is further divided into anther and filament and pistil is further divided into style stigma and ovary and ovary contains a small bead like structure which is known as ovules all these are very much important in the production of the flower so in this chapter we have learned the function of stem the roots and what is the flower further you will learn in higher studies the fruits and the different parts of the flower also you will learn in the higher class so stem is a just like a carrier it transports the water and minerals to the different part of the body isn't it and it is a two way street like it also take to the upper side and also to the lower side of the plant it provides to the all the parts of the plant why roots roots help in the anchoring the plant to the ground yes it fix the plant to the ground and we have learned here two type of roots tap root and fibrous root again tap root also has a lateral root isn't it okay and even root and venation are connected to each other so this is a some important related to plants so now you have some knowledge to study the plant later on some more in detail also you will study in the higher classes for this day this much is enough for this lesson okay thank you students have a good day